one of those projects uh, and turned out to be the Hubble Space Telescope. I was going back and forth uh, between Lockheed and Perkinelma, which is back in New York somewhere. I've forgotten exactly where. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I worked pretty close with them, particularly at first. They, uh, uh, they decided they wanted me to get on it because I had a pretty good reputation for getting things done. And uh, so uh, I uh, gratefully accepted, but went, went into the boss's, big boss's office and uh, went over the blueprints to let me, so I could sort of get familiar with them. And uh, I did all of that uh, probably the first six months or so of the program. Very, very uh, detailed because we were still developing details on how things were going to work. And uh, we were working off of uh, preliminary engineering, basically. It's a huge concept to try to bring into your head for the first time. But at that time, everything was classified. So, you know, we wanted to beat the Russians and uh, you couldn't let anything escape. And I had a top secret clearance, of course. By that time, uh, they had compartmentalized it so that you only got top secret uh, clearances and you get, a, you get a badge that's got a bunch of squares on it and different numbers put in there. And then different numbers were referred to different programs that you were cleared for. But I got one that had a lot of them on there, a lot of numbers, because I was going to be going from program to program. I had to have access to get into other programs besides Hubble. Uh, they were they had already pretty much uh, agreed who we were going to use. There was Perkin Elmer, there was uh, Kodak, um, other, other ones back in Rochester area. There's a lot of them back there. Because I was actually the manufacturing manager and building this thing. Marshall Space Flight Center commissioned the optics company Perkin Elmer to design and build the Optical Telescope Assembly, or OTA, and find guidance sensors for the space telescope. Lockheed was commissioned to construct and integrate the spacecraft in which the telescope would be housed. Exactly. We did a lot of satellite work, Lockheed did. So this was just one of those satellite things. And I had others besides, my, besides this one. Well, but this is the one that absolutely upended the whole field of astronomy. It, it did for a fact. It did for a fact, but not right away, not right away. I remember when we were all sitting around and getting the first feedback from uh, shots taken in space and the disappointment in the crowd when they, could, when they found out that things were not as crisp as we thought they were gonna be. There was a little bit of smearing in there and so forth and so on. There was a commission, it was called the Allen Commission. They looked into what happened and what they found was that uh, there was a, quote, reflective null corrector, a testing device used to achieve a properly shaped non-spherical mirror that had been incorrectly assembled, and one lens was out of position by 1.3 millimeters. <laughs> That's not very much, Joe. Fortunately, they were able, because of that, to back out the uh, math that allowed them to create Radio. spectacles, Radio. literally, the, the glasses <laughs> that they put on the, uh, on the Hubble to fix its vision. And what a huge, huge, huge difference that made. We, you could see an eyelash on the on ground or something if you wanted to look for it. Spectacular. The spacecraft in which the telescope and instruments were to be housed was another major engineering challenge. Right. It, it would have to withstand frequent passages from direct sunlight into the darkness of Earth's shadow, which would cause major changes in temperature, while being stable enough to allow extremely accurate pointing of the telescope. Can you imagine that? How that would play on a, on a thick piece of glass like that? You, you had a perfectly focused and then you didn't. And then you did, and then you didn't. They did another interesting thing that I, I, I still recall. They were having one, one thing they were having a problem with was when you have separation of different pieces.
pieces of equipment. They would have a ring. It was a pyrotechnic ring. And they would blow it at a given point in, in orbit. It would explode and, and separate then primary and secondary uh, segment. And uh, the problem that came up with that almost right away was that uh, when it exploded, it put tiny, tiny fragments of metal in the air. So Lockheed came up with a, a new thing, which is we call it super zip. This, the zip cord was normally a pyrotechnic device that just blew up. And so uh, Lockheed engineers, bless their hearts, invented something called super zip. We knew we had to do something about the, uh, all this fragmentation and dust. Just the dust would, would, would ruin a picture, of course. And uh, so uh, the engineers invented this tube that you put the pyrotechnic tape in so that when it exploded and caused a positive charge or uh, gases in there, it would expand the tube so that it would cause this two parts to separate, but it held all of the uh, dust uh, in, inside that hollow tube. I thought that was pretty bitching myself. <laughs> 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 but I was pretty impressed with that. And, and uh, then we, we used that super zip cord like that on everything afterwards. It sure blew me away. I thought it was really good. I got in on some of the uh, uh, design and, and talking with the engineers. We, we would ask questions back and forth to each other and try to figure out ways, what, what could go wrong with this, you know? And that was one of the big things that we did. There were others, but that, that one there I liked a lot because it had so many different uses. The other thing that was interesting to me, it was interesting, it was always interesting to go back to and talk with the uh, lens maker the people putting the lens together because they have they have instrumentation back there uh, for, for polishing cameras like that that is just unbelievable so uh, and I just I just from an engineering standpoint I just love standing on the sideline for once and getting to watch somebody else work I was probably going back there once or twice a month well twice a month probably and towards the end, I was back there every day, or go back for a week uh, while I got a package and ready to ship. And then you're, of course, the guy as far as honoring the Hubble. And I can't think of anybody more deserving, honestly, than yourself. <laughs> you. So Thank pretty you. fascinating stuff. So uh, a friend of mine called me and said, you know, you really ought to go down there and talk to those guys. And so uh, I did, and I never regretted it. But Lockheed was just a wonderful company to work for. I worked there 32 years, so I know yep. a lot about them.